Hey everyone, Jennifer here from Joy, Journey Home Yoga, here to talk about the pose of the week, which is pigeon. So just gonna show you some different variations, how to use props, different ways to come into it, in and out of it. Yes, I'm wearing jeans and socks because pigeon is kind of a more, uh, it's a longer held posture. So it's good to take your time getting into it and holding it to allow your muscles to actually respond to the posture. So it's, a, it's good for the hips, the glutes, the low back, the, the legs. I mean, there's so many different things for your mind to bring your focus into your body and to focus on your breath. So it's a reflective posture, which they all can be. So I'm gonna start with one of the most intermediate, more challenging ways to get into it, which would be from your down dog. So from your down dog, you would normally either kick one leg up and then bring it through, or you could even just bring it through from your down dog. So I'm gonna take my left knee forward. So taking my left knee forward, I'm gonna to start to align my hips. So staying up high, you wanna check in, make sure your low back feels okay here. You can engage your core and think about lengthening the spine. So you always wanna take a peek back at that back leg, make sure it's straight back behind you first. And then from here, if your low back is bothering you a little bit, just walk your hands forward so you lower down a bit and you can still make the same adjustments. So you're gonna lean to one side and just play around with your flexibility. So you might take this front, so I'm leaning to the side, I'm gonna take my shin so it's more parallel to the top of the mat and just play around there. So right now my hips are not aligned, but I'm just playing around with stretching a little bit deeper into that hip joint, your IT band, which is that long piece of fascia that runs along the side of your thigh. And I'm just rocking from side to side. And again, noticing how my low back feels, making adjustments. And then after you play around there, you wanna to start to align your hips. So bring yourself back to center, which means you're gonna slide that lower front leg back a little bit and find where you are at center. And find that perfect place between, that little bit of discomfort. So as far forward as you can bring your shin, depending on how warmed up you are, what your flexibility allows, how you feel that day. It all depends on that, with how far you're gonna be able to bring your shin forward. If your hip is way lifted in back, let me move back over here. If it's way lifted, right? So when you bring your hip square, if this folded leg, that hip is way lifted, you can either take a pillow or a block and slide it under. And you want your hips to be as even on le both sides, left and right, as possible. And then from there, kind of lengthen that back leg out a little bit more. You can tuck your toes and walk that leg back a little. And then you're gonna slowly lower down. So as you lower down, you're thinking about lengthening the spine. Lowering down, finding a place where you can hold, which could be here, or you could extend. Release your head down, you might rest your forehead on your hands. And once you lower all the way down, when you're holding in your pigeon, you wanna relax your belly and then just start to breathe and notice what's happening in your body. So you're holding the posture, you're breathing, and you're allowing your muscles to respond by deepening your breath. So you're finding that perfect place of discomfort and normally when you hold in pigeon, more discomfort will arise with the hold because your muscles are starting to unwind more and more with the hold. So you're breathing, noticing, continuing to relax tension as it builds. So it's kind of like this rising and falling and rising and falling. I recommend holding for about five minutes on each side, maybe a little bit longer if you'd like, but really find that perfect place with your hips. Don't force anything and then just breathe and come back to your intention, come back to a mantra maybe that you like to listen to or an affirmation or invocation that you've set for yourself. So it's really a good practice. It can be a meditative practice. Another way to come into pigeon is from your hands and knees. Maybe you just work through cat-cow or some balancing posture, spinal balance. And then it's gonna be the same thing. You just slide whichever leg you're working on 
slide that knee forward so it's next to that hand and then that same process i like to lean to one side and play around kind of stretch a little bit deeper into the hips no forcing just kind of see where you are and then sliding that shin in a little bit squaring the hips using a prop either a block or a pillow underneath the hip so it's supported lengthening that leg back behind you take a peek over the shoulder make sure the leg is straight and then you can work a little bit stronger in your pigeon if your low back is feeling really good here engaging the core come up on your fingertips and really rise up you might even reach your arms up and just play around and allow everything is slow and mindful you're allowing your muscles to open and work for you now if all of this is too much of a challenge doing pigeon doing pigeon traditionally the way that i just showed you then you can do your reclined so you do it on your back and you cross one leg over so whichever so right now i have my right ankle crossed over my left thigh right above the knee and i'm going to bring this left knee in toward my body and press the right knee away and find that perfect stretch in the hip you want to find that perfect place so it's still going to create that little bit of discomfort you're you are controlling it with your hands so you're pulling this knee in pressing this knee away and then you're breathing so again you're going to relax your belly you're going to hold there and allow your muscles to respond and it works in a very similar way as your upright pigeon so pigeon is a mindful practice it's not about getting your shin parallel to the top of the mat it's not about forcing yourself into anything so we want to watch for your low back and make adjustments from there engage your core think about lengthening the spine lower your torso down a little bit if you feel too much pressure or pinching in your low back and then from there lengthen the body think about lengthening lengthening that back leg lengthening the spine and then you connect with your breath and as you hold in the posture it's okay to make some adjustments as your body responds you might be able to pull that shin further up toward the top of the mat or maybe you need to pull it back a little bit if you found that you've, you've gone too far in the posture so always honoring your body that is honestly the most important thing you can do is honor your body and you know be really honest every time you practice yoga of course use props it's okay to use pillows and blocks and straps and again take your time in and out of the postures the transitions are just as important as the postures themselves so i hope this helped you with your pigeon um, the other thing that's kind of cool actually before i let you go so when you're in pigeon is coming out of pigeon okay so one thing that i like to do is lean over to the side of the leg that's forward swing this front leg around and then you can play around with your cobbler's pose you can play around with staff pose some twists here so you start to work on the opposing posture some seated forward folds here all different things that you can do and then you can swing it back back to your pigeon and you can come back onto hands and knees or you can press directly back up to down dog or your three leg dog so there's lots of variations to play around with and remember the more movement that you can bring into your body the greater your strength and flexibility is going to be and you and when you listen to your body when you learn how to tune in it knows exactly what to do next and then whatever you did on the other side practice on this side so if you're practicing at home or even in the studio say you do pigeon in the middle or the beginning or the middle of class and then your teacher says we're going to go into deep relaxation if there's any other postures you feel like you might want before you come into your shavasana maybe you try pigeon again and see where your body is and again you can kind of see where you were when you practiced it before and then where you are at the end of class and you might find a little more spaciousness in your body you might find a little more ease of breath so it's kind of neat to be able to compare those two as well so the different transitions again would be leaning leaning off to the side swinging that leg over again cobbler's pose staff pose seated forward fold some twists all different things you might even throw a boat in here and then if you are on your back doing your pigeon this way 
you can bring knees into chest. You might even do a little bit of bridge to just kind of counter the pigeon. You might bring soles of the feet together, knees wide open. And then you might just kind of hang out here. Another nice thing is to windshield wipe your knees from side to side. So it's nice to oppose whatever posture you're doing to allow your muscles to get the benefit of both. So the flexibility is strength. So those are just some options for you that I hope you enjoyed. And if you have any questions, feel free to email me, info at journeyomyoga.com. I'll let your teachers know what you want to see more of. Enjoy pigeon this week and namaste.